The problem is, is that you've got all of these issues with um, education being too high level and too abstract. Hi, my name is Karina McCosco from Academic Influence, and I'm here with Jason Denno from the University of Arizona. And today we are going to be talking about another program, which is a bachelor's in cybersecurity. And so just starting off, um, I typically ask this, tell us how your program got started and what was kind of the original vision for that. Great. Well, um, actually, I came here in 2016 to start this program. So the, uh, there was a need from the defense community here in Fort, outside of Fort Huachuca. We're, we're right outside of Fort Huachuca. Our campus is actually in Sierra Vista, Arizona. And there was a need for cyber professionals. So um, they you know, needed a program like this. So I was brought in and I reverse engineered a cyber operations program from NSA's most technical um, requirements that they have. So. And we built the program completely online to begin with um, as well, and then backed it into face-to-face. -face. So it was really need-driven by the, you know, the community and the industry, but we chose to build the most technical program in the nation and deliver it completely online with an in-classroom-like feel because we had those live synchronous lectures and everything that I'm sure we'll get into. Yeah, and so that is so interesting that you said reverse engineer because you actually worked in the cybersecurity field for like 20 plus years. So you kind of knew what they were looking for. And that kind of leads me into my second question is, how prepared do you think people are for the qualifications that they're looking for in some of the major cybersecurity um, employers after they come out of your program? After they come out of our program, they're extraordinarily prepared. So um, we actually looked at when we built our program, um, doing a different paradigm, right? I, I do this talk um, at, in national conferences called Solving the uh, Cyber Workforce Dilemma. And the problem is, is that you've got all of these issues with um, education being too high level and too abstract and students not being able to understand everything they've learned and apply it to a specific situation. And then on the other hand, you've got training which is really buttonology, right? You're learning how to do things and it, you, you can learn really well, but if the situation changes, not the one you were trained on, you know, you, they don't have enough depth to really apply it um, all the time to the next situation. Um, and then certifications are a, ne a necessary evil in this field, but they really don't, they don't teach you anything. They just prove that you could remember just enough information <laughs> to pass the test at the time you took it, right? Right. So, what we did is we built a active hybrid learning model. So we took the best of education and the best of training, and then we added in research and simulation-based education components and critical thinking, and we merged that all together. So our students learn the high-level concepts and the methodologies, but then they have to do some research and some critical thinking. Then they have to practice it in a simulation. And then they have to take all of that and do the thing that we taught them in the real world on real tools against real data. So we don't let a student pass a class unless they're capable. And we don't let them graduate unless they can bring everything together and prove that they have the real knowledge, skills, and abilities necessary to actually operate in the real world. So our students are career ready when they walk out the door. Wow, that's awesome. And focusing on that real world application, because I'm assuming your audience is coming in, they want to be prepared for the workforce, no doubt, but they also want to get their degree with the most no nonsense, I would say. And I think you kind of mentioned that when you said they don't want some broad, you know, overarching thing. They want to know exactly what they need to know and be prepared for the workforce. So your program, it's online, obviously, which is number one, I would say no nonsense kind of uh, deal. How would you say it compares to other programs in terms of just getting the information you need and being extremely qualified for the workforce? Well, again, I think what we've done in our program sets us apart from everyone else out there right now. And to give you an example, we are um, one of NSA's 24 cyber uh, centers of academic excellence in cyber operations, right? 
Now, wow. there's hundreds of CAE, CD, cyber defense, and research, the R's. There's only 24 of the highly technical schools that do the offense and the defense. Now, we're a bachelor's of applied science, so I only have juniors and seniors, right? And, and it's an applied degree. So I have to do everything the other 23 schools do in four years, we have to do in two years with our students. Right. So when you say cutting out the nonsense, that's exactly what we did, right? We, could, we cut out every single thing the student didn't need and we crammed everything else and we got like 10 pounds of stuff crammed in a five pound bag, right? And we tell the right. students it's gonna be hard, but it's totally gonna be worth it when you're done. So those ethereal classes that, you know, they might have taken somewhere else, we don't have to deal with that. We can just get all hands on all the time and make sure that, you know, the student really understands and is really capable of doing something. And that's, that's rare for a program. And that's why I think our students are so prepared when they come out because they're used to the fast pace. They're used to actually having to do it. And a lot of our students, they leave with that, I'm not sure what I actually know stage. And they walk into their first job and, and they go, oh, I actually know as much, if not more than the other people here. And they're a lot more comfortable and they're extraordinarily successful. Wow, and, and that must be a good feeling compared to walking in and being like, I went to school for four years, but I have no idea how to actually apply this. And you talked about it being extremely worth it, which I think is absolutely true, not even just for the students, but also, like you said, for the employers, because there's such a lack of people in this field. And so talk for a second, what is your target audience for this program? Is it people who are just coming out of college, people who are coming back for a degree, or who is it? It's actually everything you can think of, right? So about two and a half, three semesters ago, we we graduated a 16-year-old Doogie Hauser, right? The, the kid got all the way through his bachelor's degree by the time he turned 16. So, and he was almost wow. getting ready to turn 17. And I have a 69-year-old in the program right now. Our average student's um, population is somewhere between 24 and 38. So we see a lot of career changers. We see a lot of people who are trying to level up in their career. But we've had over 40 people with PhDs come to our undergraduate program. And I don't mean professors. I mean students in our undergraduate bachelor's of applied science program. We've seen people with master's degrees, multiple master's degrees and PhDs come to our program so they can get the real skills because they go to these other programs. And, and there's a lot of great programs all over the nation, right? Not as good as ours, of course. Um, but, the, uh, the, you know, they... They go to these other programs and they get this degree or they get, you know, they get this certification and they're a cyber expert. And then they get into the field and go, oh, I don't actually have the skills I need. And we see them come back to us. A lot of our students, I don't know the exact percentage, but I'd say a little less than half are students coming back to us because they're like, OK, I got to know how to really do this. I got to really be career ready. Right. And that 600,000 open jobs in the U.S. right now, I'm less worried about that than the 980,000 that we filled because those positions are filled by a lot of folks who are great Americans. They've gone to these great programs and so forth, but they didn't really actually get the hands on skills. So now they've got this false sense of security. Well, I'm a cyber professional and I hired nine other cyber professionals and we all have our four certificates we need. So our company is cyber secure. And then they get breached and go, what happened? It's because they're looking at it from the paperwork standpoint or the managerial standpoint. And they don't understand the intricate detail of the technical details that they need to be able to actually defend a company. Oh, that is so interesting. And so the people who are coming back to get those their degree, are those people who have already gotten like a PhD or a master's from the University of Arizona or another school in cybersecurity and then they realize that they're not prepared? Some of them. I don't think we have any that have come from the University of Arizona. Um, but okay, so other we've had, we, I, I know I've had um, students with a PhD in, you know, um, cybersecurity from another university. I won't mention them because I don't want to, you know, I think right, they're a good course, university, yes. but I don't want to pick at them, right? Um, yeah. But that student came in and he was like, listen, I, I, 
I can say all the words, but there's, I can't do any of the things. I need you to teach me how to do the things, right? But then I had another uh, student come in with a PhD in aerospace engineering. And he came here to learn cyber so he could actually apply that in aerospace engineering. So, you know, it's, it's a full gambit of things. We do have high school students who get their community college, you know, AA concurrently while they're in high school and then magically show up with us at 18 years old, ready as a junior. There's few of those and a few of the, of the graduate level folks that have already done it um, on both ends. But, you know, the, out of the 255-ish so that we've graduated so far, I would say the vast majority, well over 200 of them were, you know, their first degree that they were working for. The, the others were typically coming back and trying to kind of level up or change careers. Interesting. And so, like you mentioned, there are thousands of career openings in mm-hmm. cybersecurity. And so, why do you think that is? Is is it just because cybersecurity is such a new career path that it hasn't kind of caught up to the amount of people who are getting a degree in it? Or is it just because we need so many cybersecurity people? Well, it's, believe it or not, it's a very common question I get, right? Because usually what I get is, hey, how long is this career going to be hot, right? I don't want to get a degree and then have all my, you know, my degree not be worth it shortly thereafter. Um, So... I usually answer that question, um, and I'm getting to answer this question here, with a question. And I'll ask them, do you know every process running on your phone right now? And do you know if it's legitimate or not? Can you tell me if somebody's actually on your phone with you? And more importantly, and usually the younger younger students in our program, I'll ask them a follow-up question of, if an attacker's on your phone, but you don't know it, your battery doesn't die any faster. Your phone doesn't slow down. You see no evidence of them there at all. Do you even care? And you have no idea how many people say, well, I guess I don't, right? But the problem is, is that cybersecurity is being driven by a couple things. Number one, it's the shiny new toy, right? Cyber, AI, quantum, you know, those are all the big things that you want to be part yeah. of, right? Um, but believe it or not, it's you, it's me, it's all of us. We are making it worse. So um, do you have a smartphone? Yes. When you go to get your next smartphone, do you want it to be slower? Uh, you want no, it less yes, features. You want less features though, right? Uh, no. And you want to wait an extra year or two before it comes out. Yeah, no. Right. So you want better, faster, and cheaper, right? Because you, you know, and that's the consumer mindset, right? So the consumer saying... I need this better, I need it faster, and I want it cheaper, right? For God's sakes, I want it. I don't even want to pay for it. I want them just to give it to me with my phone plan, right? So the consumer is driving this market, and Apple's thinking, ooh, I need to get all these consumers, or Android, you know, or Samsung saying, no, 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 I want those consumers. So Apple's not going to spend an extra two years doing security on the phone, and neither is it Samsung. I'm not picking on either company. They need to rush that to market to convince you to buy it, right? Because that's what you want. So they're packing it with more features. They're going to push it out faster and they're going to make it cheaper, which means they're not going to test it as much because testing costs time, money, and and energy. And the features, you want to work in the command line, right? You want to write in every single command into your keyboard that you're doing, or do you just want to click on something? Yeah, maybe I'll just click on it. (laughs) Right. So you're getting abstracted further and further away from the technology where it's just this thing I touch and it does what I want it to do or I talk it to and it does what I want to. But we're rushing it to market and we're making it cheaper. So we're not spending the time and energy it takes to secure the device. And we're creating more and more holes because the more features you put in, that don't get tested, they get rushed to market, the more chances there's a a security issue. So until the consumer either becomes extremely aware of everything that's happening on the device and can manage it themselves, or we all decide we want dumb flip phones that take three years to come to market and they're like $900 or $1,900, we are making this problem worse. So cyber professionals are gonna have very, very long careers. 
Yeah, so basically, in conclusion, cybersecurity is not going anywhere anytime soon, and it is an incredible field to get into. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, and so just finishing out this interview, I know we've pushed a lot of information onto people, especially because cybersecurity is not a very well-known field, even though, I mean, we mentioned it's a huge field. I feel like people even maybe hear about data science more, computer science, even though those kind of go hand in hand. Like the more people you have in computer science, the more people you're going to need in cybersecurity to kind of check the two. So just finishing up, is there anything that you would want to say to prospective students who are maybe considering cybersecurity, or even if this is like one of the first times that they're hearing about this booming field and the, what did you say, 6,000 job openings? What would you want to say to those? 600,000. 600,000. Just in the U.S. Just in the U.S. So, I mean, that alone makes people's ears perk up and they're like, well, maybe I should go back and get a degree in cybersecurity. So what do you want to say to those students? Here's what I'd say to the students. If you love solving problems, you're going to love cyber. If you want to be a lifelong learner, learner you're going to love cyber because it, you have to keep learning or you fall behind every day because it constantly changes. And it's always interesting because it's not just something you're doing. There's a bad guy on the other side trying to get past you. So it's this constant tension you're working with, number one. Number two, we've been in unemployment, uh, 0% unemployment for almost eight years now. So, and there's 600,000 current open jobs in the U.S. right now. A year and a half ago, that was 350,000. The problem is getting worse, not better, which means if you want an amazing career that easily goes into the six figures, if you have any skills and, you know, you work in a, you don't work in a tiny little town that only has one gas station, right? Um, you can easily have a six-figure job with great career satisfaction, with an amazing amount of things that will keep you interested if you come in this field because cars are getting more electronics. I mean, when's the last time we said we want wooden toys, right? Um, even toys are evil now. So it, this career is going to be around forever. It's exciting and you can do it. If you take one bite at a time, you can absolutely do it, even if you have no experience. Wow, well, thank you. Yeah, I hope this was really encouraging to people. I don't want anybody to feel like we're pushing this career or even your university, but I just am genuinely so excited about cybersecurity. And I, I feel like you can definitely tell my enthusiasm, especially with your program. I mean, you guys are one of the leading cybersecurity online degrees right now and so yeah i'm just really excited for this field and i hope other people can kind of share in my enthusiasm so thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me it was a really um interesting just hearing about your program and hearing about the realm of cybersecurity. so thank you well thank you so much and i welcome every single student we'd love to have you